Over the years working with people who are considering moving to Berkshire County, I've encountered some commonalities in the questions that I'm getting asked from people when they're considering moving here. So I thought I'd just put this video together real quick going over the top five questions that I get from people who are considering moving here uh, when they reach out to me to figure out if this is the right spot for them and within Berkshire County, where exactly they want to go. All right, so we're gonna dive right into it with a banger of a question. What are the best towns to live in in Berkshire County? All right, well, this question is not a one size fits all answer. And typically when people ask me this, I kind of flip the conversation around and I start asking you questions to figure out what it is that you're into and what it is that has you looking at the Berkshires to begin with. You see, if you're moving to the Berkshires to be in wide open spaces and you wanna buy a piece of property or home where you're not going to see your neighbors i'm going to probably point you towards some of the east county locations unless you have a ton of money that you're looking to spend um, because you want to be in some of the south county areas you want to be by certain towns in south county it just gets very expensive in that part of the county to get that level of privacy uh, when you look a little bit more east you can get some uh, pretty good bang for your buck in terms of having privacy having land and having a decent house without absolutely breaking the bank. If you're moving to the area and you're looking to get a job here, of course, I would ask you what type of employment, but oftentimes I find myself recommending to people that they stay towards the central part of the county. Pittsfield's the biggest city in the county. It has around 37, 38,000 people there, while Berkshire County as a whole has a little over 120,000 people. So we see a lot of the business stuff happening around that center piece of the county, which is Pittsfield. Um, so with that in mind, it's very likely I'd point you towards Pittsfield, Dalton, Lanesboro, or um, some of the surrounding areas there work very well. Maybe you can find something decent in Lenox. Um, Lee is starting to get a little further from Pittsfield, but um, it, it's amazing there as well. Now, if you're looking to get something here because you want to have some quaint little downtown to walk around and maybe it's a second home, oftentimes I'm gonna point you towards Stockbridge, Great Barrington, or Lenox, they have some of the most delightful downtown areas to walk around if you're into a live music scene and you want to have some good restaurants to go to. There's good restaurants all over the county, frankly, but there's especially some good ones in those areas. Yeah, with it, with it being a vacation home where you want to be close to some happening downtown scene, especially during the summer months, that is gonna be the direction that I'm probably gonna point you in, though uh, we might go check out some other areas as well. That being said though, I barely scraped the surface within that as I'm sure that you can tell. Um, at the end of the day, it's very hard to answer such a broad question um, without actually just talking to you. So if that's a question that you have and you'd like to discuss it, please feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is all below. You can call me, text me, email me, whatever. We'll go over it. I'm happy to get to know you and happy to help you find exactly what you're looking for. Moving on to the second question that, that we're gonna be going over today. How do the cost of living here compare to other areas? Well, once again, that's gonna largely depend on where you're coming from. However, we do have some very affordable places to live here. You can still find a fully move-in ready home here for $200,000 or so. Um, it's definitely challenging to find stuff at that price point nowadays, but I have clients that I'm working with right now with budgets right around there. I've seen houses close for about that much recently that did not need a ton of work and that I actually went to showings at. Um, and I would have moved into those houses with, without, you know, completely gut renovating the house. So I assume that there's plenty of people out there that would love to have a home like that, especially with that price point. The thing about real estate is obviously it's very location dependent and Berkshire County is not incredibly consistent in what the property values are. So if you're looking for the best bang for the buck, um, I'm gonna point you into a very different direction within Berkshire County rather than rather than if you're looking for a luxurious home, luxurious lifestyle, that's gonna be a bit of a different conversation in where I'm gonna suggest that you go. The southern part of the county is much more expensive than the central and northern part of the county. Now this is a issue that's largely created by second home ownership, which I work with second homeowners all of the time. Um, typically they're looking to be in the southern part of the county. And a big part of that is a lot of these people are coming from 
from Boston in New York City. So these uh, people, they, they want to have a shorter drive to get to where their vacation home is, which really pushes up the demand. Also, the quaint downtowns are just so charming. People often find themselves falling in love with these areas. Williamstown is also very expensive, though, on, uh, on the contrary from the southern part of the county. This is all the way in the uh, northwest part of the county and we see some very high prices up that way too we see some serious homes getting built in that area land can be quite expensive in that area and home prices are quite a bit more expensive there even though you're right next door to north adams which has arguably some of the cheapest homes in the entire county. You find the best deals in the county when you start looking at, um, at North Adams because it was at one point a major mill town and um, when these mi mills and factories started getting shut down and we moved away from that type of um, community, we saw much less of a demand for people to live there because a lot of the good jobs went away. But now we're starting to see that area turn into a more artsy community and maybe we'll see people coming to scoop up the homes because of the cheap prices and uh, some of the great amenities that you have around that area. So for a third FAQ, let's look at recreational activities and amenities. Berkshire County is full of outdoor spaces for the public to enjoy. If you've been poking around on Zillow looking at home prices, um, you probably have noticed that the lakefront homes are often very, very expensive. They, uh, the, the second homeowners really love these lakefront homes um, and it's very easy to see why. Of course, the people that live here, a lot of them aspire to own real estate on the lakefronts. Um, anyway, most of the lakes here do have a public point of access for the local community to go and enjoy. How this works can vary largely depending on what lake you're talking about or pond. Um, for example, Stockbridge Bowl is open to the residents of Stockbridge, but external people are really not supposed to go there. People do all the time. No one's really stopping them at this point, but you are supposed to be a local resident to Stockbridge to be using these spaces. Anyway, if you look at Anota Lake in Pittsfield, for example, there's a large stretch of public park and walking area. You can walk right lakeside um, for quite a ways. There's some wooded areas that the public can go into. Um, there's uh, spots where people actually go camping and there's benches set up for people to have picnics. We also have lots of baseball fields and football fields and playgrounds all over the county. It's really not hard to find outdoor spaces to enjoy um, that are available to the public. Another thing to look at is there's a few different state forests throughout the Berkshires that the public are welcome to enjoy as well. So if you're into mountain biking, hiking, any of those types of activities, it's very, very easy to find all of that type of stuff to do here. There's some great hiking trails here. Let me know what part of the county you're going to and I'll point you in the right direction of where you should be looking. Um, you can drive a car up to the top of Mount Greylock and see beautiful views up there. I, I could go on forever about the publicly available things that you can do here. There is so much to do here. As long as your big thing isn't being into clubbing, you're probably good to go here. The fourth question that I get asked all the time, and this one's gonna be a relatively quick answer, is what public transportation is available? And I'm gonna tell you it's just about zilch, none. There are buses going throughout the county, but it's relatively minimal in my opinion. Um, we do not have Uber here. So if you're someone who's used to getting around via Uber and you just have decided not to own a car, um, if you're thinking about moving here, that's likely gonna be something you're gonna wanna rethink. It's very hard to get around this, this area without having a vehicle. The public transportation is really just almost non-existent. And finally, our fifth FAQ is what is it like to live in the Berkshires during the off season? So of course, like some of the other answers I've had, this is gonna depend a bit, depending on what part of the county you're looking at. When you're looking at areas that are more densely populated with second homeowners, um, you're gonna see a much more drastic drop off in the amount of people there. We also do have a lot of tourism driven to our area during the summer months. So we do see an uptick of people being here. You see more people walking around, um, especially in the more quaint downtown areas that I've mentioned. Anyway, in the winter, um, it's cold. We get snow. Usually this winter we didn't have a ton of snow. Um, anyway, the 
bar scene will get to be a little bit more local. You'll start to see more familiar faces more frequently, less people that you're, you've never seen before, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Some people really like that about the area here. Although we would consider the winter to be the off season, it's also ski season. And we have Butternut, we have Jiminy Peak, we have Bosque. Otis Ridge, and, and these things can be draws for tourism as well. So when you look at the off season, um, although we see less people here, there's still people traveling here to enjoy the winter months. So I guess we hardly really have an off season. Maybe the spring would be our off season, if anything, because the fall, we have the fall foliage and it's beautiful and people travel from all over the world to see it. It's supposed to be the best in the world uh, during the summer, obviously enjoying the lake fronts or hiking trails and all, all of that. I guess that really just leaves the muddy spring months, which seem to go by relatively quickly most of the time anyway. Once those lakes open up, people start getting their docks and they start getting ready to enjoy that scene. So I guess although the winter months we see less people, there's still stuff happening here. It's not like living in a vacation destination that is open for a few months out of the year and then just shuts down. I think a really good example of an area like that would be like living on Nantucket or Martha's Vineyard. Um, those islands, people go there in the summers and then the winter, it's, it's very, very different. All of the tourism is gone. There's not a ton of people. So many of the people owning homes there are second homeowners. It's, it's not really like that here. We see a lot of the second homeowners still coming to enjoy their properties because the snow is beautiful here um, and the ski resorts are great. You can go snowshoeing. There's a, you, you still can just enjoy the outdoors here if you're willing to just go out and uh, if you're willing to just go out with a jacket on and deal with it being cold. It's winter. But anyway, there you have it. Those are the five top FAQs about moving to Berkshire County. I hope that was helpful for you. If you have other questions, I'm always happy to have a conversation. Reach out to me. I'm happy to help you get familiar with the area and get to know the things about our community that are important to you. I also have quite a bit of experience in real estate. I'm happy to help you find the right house and help you get it for a fair price. So there you have it. Those are the top five FAQs about moving to Berkshire County. Uh, thanks for joining me on this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.